Have you heard the soundbite from a recent meta study about bone health that says that Pilates and yoga are insufficient for increasing bone mineral density? The thing about sound bites is that there's usually a lot more to them than first appears. Today, we're going to discuss the study and several other studies to look at different approaches for exercise for osteoporosis, along with the potential pros and cons of each approach. Hi, I'm Sarah and I'm a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm also a BoneFit certified fitness instructor and a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. On this channel, we discuss all things related to bone health. I am so glad that you are here to join me in the journey to better bone health. So let's dive into the recent metadata about exercise for osteoporosis. The metadata includes 11 different studies with participants ranging in age from 45 to 78 years old. There were 591 participants across the studies. The average length of the studies performed was between 12 and 32 weeks, with two studies lasting for a year. The conclusions from the study, and this is a direct quote, suggest that mind-body exercises such as Pilates and yoga did not produce a significant improvement on bone mineral density among adult women compared with the control groups. The multi-component nature of Pilates and yoga interventions, which include balance training and muscular strengthening in several weight-bearing postures, might be beneficial to improve multiple fracture risk factors in a clearly exposed population, such as postmenopausal women. Thus, despite there were non-significant results, the maintenance of bone mineral density should be considered as a positive result for this population. Lastly, we should consider that due to the short duration of the interventions and the small sample size of the conducted studies, additional randomized clinical trials specifically designed to improve bone health outcomes are needed to overcome the limitations described. Whoa, there's a lot to consider in that mouthful. The study found that bone mineral density was maintained by yoga and Pilates for the duration of the study, plus there's the added benefit of improving balance and reducing the likelihood of having a fall. The study was actually positive about doing both Pilates and yoga for bone health, which is really different from the soundbite that's getting so much press time. It's important to point out that the study did not differentiate between different types of yoga and Pilates. As a yoga teacher, I can speak to the yoga side of things. In yoga, there are many different ways to practice. It's possible to take an hour-long yoga class and not do any weight brain exercise, which wouldn't do anything to improve bone health. It's also possible to take a yoga class that's been specifically designed for osteoporosis that would include quite a bit of weight bearing. So in grouping all of the yoga together in the metadata, it doesn't provide a clear picture of what's going on. Also, in looking at the research performed by Dr. Lauren Fishman about osteoporosis in yoga, there are nuances, nuances that need to be recognized that make the metadata not a great comparison to his work. First, I wanna acknowledge that when Dr. Fishman first began his research project, it was small as a pilot study and it wasn't very conclusive but that was back in 2004. He's had ongoing research since then and now has thousands of participants with over 100,000 clinical hours of research to back his findings. In looking at the findings of his research, it's significant to point out that participants found increases in their bone mineral density after a period of two years, which is significantly different from the metadata research, time-wise. It also involves practicing yoga in a very specific way. You may have come across his 12 yoga poses. If not, I have a couple of videos where I teach how to do his poses according to the research findings. You can check those videos out here and I'll also leave a link in the description below. Each of these poses needs to be held for between 12 and 40 seconds for optimal bone building effect. It's better to repeat a pose than to hold it for longer than the recommended period of time. That's really specific, which is different from grouping all of yoga together. The metadata also discussed how yoga and Pilates are beneficial for balance. While balance might not be directly related to bone mineral density, it's really important for fall prevention and it's also a longevity indicator. 
Other researchers found that people who cannot stand on one leg for at least 10 seconds are more likely to die from all causes within the next 10 years. While I was doing my bone fit training, I heard over and over again how important it is for people to practice balance for 20 minutes every day. Before you panic and think, oh my goodness, that's so much balance, know that balance practice can include walking, standing, and generally moving around in our life as well as standing on one foot. I firmly believe that any exercise program for osteoporosis should include a component of balance practice, even though it isn't directly pertinent to bone mineral density. So now that we've gone through the metadata and considered the pros and cons of the research, the question remains, is it worth doing yoga and Pilates to improve bone health? We know that we have to do weight-bearing exercise to strengthen our bones, and we have to continue doing weight-bearing exercise for as long as we want to maintain having strong, healthy bones. So is it better to just go to the gym and lift weights? The answer to this is going to depend on your individual situation. If you enjoy going to the gym and lifting, then this is a great way to get your weight-bearing exercise. From other study data, it also looks like it's a fairly quick way to make a difference in your bone mineral density. A difference can be measured from lifting weights in as little as eight months to a year, which is significantly less time than using yoga to improve bone health. But what if you have arthritis and you can't lift weights, or you have another injury that makes lifting not very accessible? This makes doing yoga and Pilates that are specifically designed for bone health a valuable and good option. I know from working with clients that yoga for osteoporosis can be adapted to meet individual needs. Weight-bearing exercise can still be gotten even if a person can't get down to the floor. You can plank against the wall or even the kitchen counter. You can also add additional weight into your yoga or Pilates practice. My point is that there are different ways of safely getting the necessary weight-bearing exercise to improve bone health. Some ways might take more time than others. Each of our bodies are different, and we're able to do different things. It's important to find the ways that work for you in your body, and then to work on getting the right weight-bearing exercise for yourself consistently. I hope this information is helpful for you and that it gives you hope and an understanding of the benefits of different types of exercise for osteoporosis. The studies that I discussed in this video are linked below in the description if you'd like to research them yourself. If you know someone that will benefit from this information, please share this video with them. And don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I look forward to talking with you soon.